Canada to consider sending military instructors to Ukraine. Canada will consider sending military instructors to Ukraine if certain conditions are met. However, these conditions do not yet exist, according to Canadian Defence Minister Bill Blair. Any Canadian troops will be deployed only for non-combat functions. The Defence Minister emphasises that conditions in Ukraine need to change before Canadian troops can return to the country where they trained Ukrainian soldiers on the ground before the Russian invasion. Right now, circumstances are not appropriate for that training to take place in Ukraine, but we're going to continue to train, Blair says. Canada has trained over 40,000 Ukrainian soldiers as part of Operation Unifier, which began in 2015 after Russia's occupation of Crimea. However, after the Russian invasion, the Canadian military moved its training operations to the UK, Latvia and Poland. We have had a number of discussions with Ukrainians that suggest when the conditions are right, we may be able to return, Blair says. Leaving the possibility of returning to Ukraine open, Blair emphasizes that the Canadian armed forces cannot have any combat role or what could be perceived as a combat role. Earlier, French President Emmanuel Macron has not ruled out the possibility that NATO could send troops to help Ukraine. The main problem, he said, is that there is currently no consensus on this issue. Some NATO countries have already opposed this idea, including Germany, the Czech Republic, Bulgaria, Spain and Italy. At the same time, some countries are ready to consider such a possibility, such as Lithuania, Latvia and Estonia. Canada, which is also a NATO member, has said it is ready to send troops to Ukraine, but only to train Ukrainian defenders in areas far from the front. Russia developed a new weapon to shoot down U.S. and European missiles. The Russian military conducted tests of the S-500 Prometheus air defense system, which they claim is capable of shooting down hypersonic targets, reports Defense Express. Supposedly, during these tests, the S-500 system demonstrated the ability to shoot down hypersonic aerial targets. As an example, they cite prospective Western hypersonic missiles, combat units of intercontinental ballistic missiles or guided warheads, as well as short-range ballistic missiles. Russia claims that such capabilities of the S-500 were supposedly confirmed during the launch of an intercontinental ballistic missile from the Tula nuclear-powered submarine of the Russian Northern Fleet, which was launched in the Laptev Sea. Russian authorities attribute the successful destruction of targets to powerful radars, electronic computing systems, and highly maneuverable anti-aircraft missiles. Among publicly available information, it is noted that the Russian anti-aircraft missile system is a new generation of anti-aircraft missile systems, which are expected to apply the principle of separate resolution of tasks for the destruction of ballistic and aerodynamic targets. As early as 2021, Russian Deputy Prime Minister Yuri Borisov claimed that the S-500 system was allegedly in serial production. There are also plans to develop a naval version of the promising S-500 anti-aircraft missile system, including for installation on the Storm aircraft carrier project. Previously, a representative of the Defense Intelligence of the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine, Major General Vadim Skibitsky, stated that during the war, Russia transferred air defense systems from the Far East and the Northern region to Moscow and the occupied Crimea. However, the power of defense does not always correspond to the aggressor's statements. The representative of the military intelligence reported that the most powerful complex they have in service is the S-400, but even it is not entirely perfect. There are cases when their equipment fails. The well-known Pantsir also misses our aircraft, which ultimately reach their targets, he added. In Syria, Hezbollah is training Russian drone operators. In Syria, Russian operators of Iranian-made UAVs are being trained by Hezbollah for the war against Ukraine. This was reported by the main intelligence directorate of the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine. The report notes that they are being trained at the Syrian airfield of Shayrat. Trainings for Muscovites are being conducted by the Lebanese Hezbollah police and the Iranian Revolutionary Guard on the territory of the Syrian military airfield of Shayrat, the statement said. The main intelligence directorate noted that the Lebanese-Iranian-Russian training course provides for the development of the Shahed-136 and Ababil-3 UAVs as well as the Ra'ad 
remote-controlled aircraft. It is reported that the military exercises are headed by one of the Hezbollah commanders, Kamal Abu Sadiq, who specializes in the manufacture and maintenance of drones. Syrian mercenaries are undergoing training together with the Russians, whom Moscow plans to use in the war against Ukraine as UAV operators, the main intelligence directorate notes. Besides, instructors from the composition of the no longer existing Wagner Group, who were on the territory of Belarus, now take an active part in the training of Hezbollah fighters. The main task is to convey the experience of conducting military operations in Ukraine, assault operations by small groups, battles in urban areas, the use of kamikaze drones and shock UAVs with drops. Center of National Resistance of Ukraine says.